Jamaica, Caribbean paradise with a rich history. The island is full of exotic phenomena. Although everyday life can be hard for Jamaicans, they have a special formula. Take it easy. <laughs> Away from the beaches, far from tourist attractions, Jamaica reveals its rural face. The highlands abound with exotic animals and plants. A closer look reveals little gems of nature everywhere such as the Jamaican national bird, the doctor bird. Grassy mountain slopes and bamboo-covered valleys are a welcome sight for the eyes and balm for the senses. In the mountains, the fertile soil yields abundant harvests of fruit and vegetables. Even a small garden can sustain a family, especially when there's enough left over to be sold. Coconut, banana, pineapple, ackee, mango, avocado or breadfruit, almost all tropical fruits grow in Jamaica. In addition to the fertile soil, their lush growth is due to the tropical climate and, not least, to the wealth of water on the island. The subsoil consists to a greater extent of porous limestone, which is easily dissolved in the water and deposited in terraces downstream. This process results in elaborate limestone plateaus and waterfalls over which the watercourses find their way through the rainforest towards the sea. Rivers were often the only way to transport goods from the largely inaccessible inland plantations to the densely populated coastlines. Bamboo rafts were the preferred method used. Built of dried bamboo poles, they're strong enough to endure rough passages. Though it's the raftsman's daily routine, steering a raft through the rapids is a challenging job. It needs full concentration, balance and skill to navigate it just right. A raft has a limited working life of about six months before it rots. Then they simply build a new one. Banana plantations and a cemetery are signs that a settlement is near. The load is approaching its destination and the ride will soon be over.
Rafting is hard work, but rarely fast paced, like many other things here on the island. After it arrives at the village jetty on the coastal plain, the raft is unloaded onto a push cart. A handmade wooden vehicle. For many people on the island, it's the only affordable means of transportation. At the coast, fishing is a popular way for Jamaicans to earn a little money to get by. But the struggle against the elements is a hard and dangerous way to make a living. Anyone who owns a boat often shares it with others to keep fuel costs down. That's what Roy Collins does. He's happy to live on his own in a simple little beach hut. He's well equipped. Everything he needs for fishing is within reach. His friends were lucky today. The sea was calm and the catch successful. Bonito, a species of tuna, are the most highly prized fish. I'm a fisherman, I like the fishing, I like the water, I like the beach. So, you know, and then it's more a little bit more slow for me in Jamaica. I can take it more relaxed, it's not so fast, so, you know, and the life is a little bit more natural, you know. When you want to live like not so much stress and, you know, get away from most of the, the headache and things, then you, you try to live a more simple life, you know. <laughs> where you don't need so much expensive things and then, you know, sometimes you can't afford it. So what do you want to do? Live a simple life and you have less headache, you know. Kingston, the capital of Jamaica, is located on the southeast of the island. About one million people live in the metropolitan area. The city owes its existence to the enormous natural harbor. It's much more difficult to live a simple life here than it is on the beach. Although it's a modern city, you still find plenty of simple pushcarts here. They're used for all kinds of things, competing courageously with their motorized counterparts. Downtown Kingston still holds many remnants of the British colonialism that ended in 1962. But like the famous Ward Theatre, some historic buildings have fallen into ruin due to lack of funds. Well-kept statues, however, are everywhere. Around William Grant Park, historic and contemporary national heroes stand watch over the chaotic traffic. Their biggest hero takes pride of place. Bob Marley, the king of reggae, a world-esteemed Rastafarian idol, and certainly the most famous Jamaican. Kingston has had an eventful past. More than 300 years ago, the harbor was already one of the most important in the Caribbean. The original harbor town was situated on a promontory Today, only fishing vessels moor here, and the fishermen make a modest living. The ocean-going liners pass by on the other side of the bay, heading to and from the main harbor. Where this little fishing village is located today was once the pirate town of Port Royal, it became infamous as the most lawless town in the Caribbean, used by buccaneers as a launching place to sail off on their raids in the 17th century. Until, after an earthquake in 1692, most of the city sank below sea level 
killing around 2,000 inhabitants. Kingston was founded by fugitives and survivors of the ruined town of Port Royal and quickly grew into the biggest town in Jamaica. The harbour is one of the largest in the Caribbean, an essential stop for thousands of ocean-going liners every year and a magnet for shipping of all kinds. Kingston is the economic heart of Jamaica. People from all over the country are drawn to the town in the hope of finding their fortune here. But 30% of the population is unemployed. This has led to Kingston becoming one of the worst crime capitals in the world. Two sides of the same coin, magnificent sunsets as night falls on one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean versus the brutal reality of poverty and violence. The people in Jamaica have to learn to live with it. Coronation Market in Kingston, the biggest market in Jamaica and main supply center for many Jamaicans. An industrious flow of people coming and going, buying and selling, vendors touting their goods and shoppers chasing bargains all create an unmistakable soundscape and an atmosphere of constant hustle and bustle. For the stall owners, their day starts at five o'clock in the morning. Late afternoon is closing time and they can take a well-earned break. Many people play dominoes, a national sport in Jamaica. They mostly play for drinks or small change. This particular form of dominoes is called cutthroat, but the bloodthirsty name belies its true character. It just means each player plays for themselves against the others. Some prefer to enjoy the late afternoon with music and dance. In memory of their African ancestry, some traditional songs are still performed in their original African languages. The next day, many of them will be off to work. For some, this will be in the fields on one of the country's numerous sugarcane plantations. Sugarcane is cultivated on a large scale in Jamaica. The main purpose of these gigantic plantations is producing sugar one of the island's main exports. But of course, much more famous internationally and definitely more popular is Jamaican rum. It's made by extracting the juice of the sugarcane. This is then fermented and distilled. The recipes are top secret and diligently guarded. 
After the distillation process, the rum has to mature in wooden barrels. It takes up to 15 years for quality rum to get its characteristic flavor. An old sugarcane mill from the late 19th century is still kept in operation for demonstration purposes. In bygone days, producers used water power for larger quantities of sugarcane. The relics of a 400-year-old water wheel and the ruins of a sugarcane mill originate from the Spanish era. The settlers of Sevilla de la Nueva produced sugar for export to Europe. Only ruins remain of the colonists' constructions. They arrived with the royal conquistadores to claim the island on behalf of the Spanish crown. The British expelled the Spaniards when they occupied Jamaica in 1655. Their architectural imprints are all over the island. One of the most impressive is Colbeck Castle, which served as a fortress against possible Spanish retaliation. Built in the style of an Italian mansion, it was named after Colonel Colbeck, a soldier in the invading British forces, who is said to have ruled his plantations from this extravagant residence. Nowadays, the walls, built from limestone and red brick, house only wild bees and lizards. In the heartland of Jamaica, the seemingly endless mountains are sparsely populated. Bridges span clear rivers, giving access to hidden plantations and hamlets in the bush. Tropical fruits grow in an exciting variety in the wild here and can be harvested by anyone. Some are eaten fresh, like orange, mango, coconut or avocado. Others need to be roasted like breadfruit or cooked like ackee. They are an all-important nutritional source for humans and animals. Not everyone has the means to transport their produce to the municipal markets. Stalls set up along thoroughfares in the countryside offer a big variety of fruit and vegetables at reasonable prices, directly from the fields and gardens. Especially popular with Jamaicans is Aki. Aki, it mostly grows wild. So you can always go and get Aki every place. And, you know, some people sell it, but usually you can go and look it for yourself. It's a good meal and it's very cheap. Most people can afford you get some Aki with a little piece of salt fish and you can, the whole family enjoy it, you know. Now, people don't have so much money where they can buy a lot of other stuff, so they can buy it. You can get some Aki when the Aki time, people, Use it up, you know. Aki is actually poisonous and should not be picked from the tree when the fruits are still closed. They're only ready for consumption when they've burst open. First, the pulp has to be carefully cut from the peel and the inedible pips must be removed. The consistency of the pulp is reminiscent of rubber, so it has to be cooked for at least half an hour. One, two, 
In the meantime, the other ingredients for this traditional Jamaican meal are prepared. Onions, sweet pepper, garlic and tomatoes. After the vegetable spice mix has been fried in vegetable oil, the drained ackee is added. It's simmered for a short while, and then the traditional ackee dish can be served. It's Sunday today. And Roy has cooked enough for all his friends. The meal will not be eaten at a table in the sun. That's for tourists. They eat where they feel most comfortable, in the shade. The taste of ackee is a bit like spicy scrambled eggs. It's a healthy meal, as it's high in plant oils and rich in protein. Cleaning the dishes in the sea saves precious drinking water and it's environmentally friendly. There's no detergent needed. The sand scrubs the dishes clean and the remaining crumbs feed the small fish in the shallow water. Most Jamaicans go to church on Sundays. Two-thirds of the population belong to a Protestant congregation, and most of their churches feature Anglican architecture. Only a few fishermen set out on a Sunday. Frigate birds, however, have to find fish every day of the week. They often circle above the beaches in anticipation of an easy meal. The birds have a very broad wingspan and spend most of their lives airborne. As soon as the fish are gutted, they swoop in and grab their share of the catch. Today there are slim pickings. Most of the boats stayed high up on the beach. Relaxing, going to church and spending time on the beach, as in many places around the world, on Sundays, idleness rules. But in Jamaica, people like to take it easy every other day of the week too. Slowing down, or decelerating, as it's called in Western industrialized countries, has long been the preferred lifestyle here. Even though life doesn't provide riches for most Jamaicans, people try to maintain their vitality and serenity. You know, I live like a cowboy on the beach. <laughs> I don't need so much. <laughs> when you're not really sick and you have freedom and you know, you're not in, <laughs> in jail, you're free, you're free by the movement, then life is okay, you know. When you get up and you can see the sunshine and everything is okay. That is very important, you know. Yeah, man. So you can enjoy life. 
take it easy. <laughs> Try to take it easy because it's not so, it's not so easy to take it easy. <laughs> you know. So you have to just try to take it easy, you know.